talking right into my microphone today because on this setting I think I got less echo. Uh, question is, am I going old school? You know, in the old days with this break shot, in the old days, <laughs> I would hit this really firm. But look at that. Kind of a Mike Siegel cinch shot rather than trying to draw the cue ball up table. I just stunned it off to the rack to the side. And uh, maybe that's old school. You let me know in the comments what you think. Seven balls in the rack area. So I've got seven balls loose on the outside, and that's all you need. And so if you, the result is excellent. I, I, hopefully you've noticed it the way I did. This is the, the best situation you could ever hope for after a break shot like this because I have a super simple shot on this three ball, and I'm going to let the cue ball drift down a little bit, and that gives me an angle on a low ball to go right up into this cluster and open them up. I've got insurance balls on both sides. There's no way to not get a shot after that that breakout. So that's old school as well. Maybe a softer, more controlled break shot uh, is more conducive to running racks. Uh, you're you're going to have to open up the center cluster a lot more often, but maybe that's a more controlled, better way to play the rack. Now I hit that that shot. I think I hit a little bit harder than I need to. This five, or I think that's the five ball, should have stopped maybe here, and then the balls wouldn't have spread as far. So I say that I hit it a little bit too hard because I don't have an ideal break shot on the side of the rack. Um, I'm looking at it now, and I'm making a decision, and I decide on this 15. Um, but I'm taking some time to, to think it through. If you look at it, I, I could use this ball as a break shot, a rail break shot, you know, and position the cue ball like where it is or somewhere over here and, and, and do a, a, rail for, a rail shot break shot. Um, I would prefer not to. And aside from that, this stripe and this stripe could work as break balls, although they're very high. You know, you could also play um, one of these balls, maybe play this as your key, your key ball and just draw back or bounce the rail up and have, and have the cue ball here to shoot the one in the side as a break shot in this fashion. So there's opportunities there. Um, the, the seven it doesn't work as a below the rack break shot. So the opportunities aren't great. So, but at this point, you either got to manufacture a better break ball or commit to one. And I think I'm committing to this 15. And I, I haven't quite worked out a pattern yet, but m what my focus now is, is right here is a blocker ball for these balls going down here. And probably this one will go in the side. But that's, that's my focus. That's probably the, the only ball that's any kind of trouble, and it's not much trouble. This is just ideal having the rack this wide open. So I'm just playing the two for the purpose of getting on the 14. And I suspect right now I was trying to make a break ball. I'm not sure because I'm drawing the cue ball up into that stripe, and I'm not sure why I would do that. Possibly what I was trying to do is go past both of those balls. I, I'm just not sure. Anyway, hard to get in trouble here. I, I would think, looking at it right now, it seems obvi the obvious shot is the four ball because you've got two up table balls. You can shoot this four, come off the rail to center table, shoot this stripe, and now all of your work is down table. I, I kind of like that. Instead, I don't mind the pattern I shoot either. So I, I, obviously I'm not cutting this ball on the side too thin. So it's it's a 100% it's a make, makeable ball. And I just need to come off the rail for an angle on the seven. So the only, the only other ball that could be considered any kind of a trouble ball is this 11 because it's on the rail. That's not going to be much use no matter what my end pattern is. So in, rather than shooting four or five, clearing the, the top of the table, I, I, I shot this way to get rid of this ball. And this is natural position on the eight. So that is the last shot that deals with anything that could potentially be any kind of trouble. So now I'm going to take a good long look. What is the end pattern? Because now we're in the end pattern. And uh, even though I've got kind of a semi-okay break shot, these balls are all wide open, and uh, you, you better come up with a good pattern to get there. I, what I saw on reviewing this rack was shooting the nine ball as the K2, then I'm, I'm just right on this ball in the side, and I can just roll forward to here with the cue ball. And uh, that's a fine pattern, and, and what I saw, and the, 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 it's, it's an automatic pattern to get there because you just shoot the eight, maybe draw back a little, then you shoot the 12, You've got an angle on the four to bounce out for the this five, and you bounce out for the nine. There you go. Um, that's the pattern that I see first. It, it kind of surprised me a little bit, but I shoot something just a little bit different. 
I'm, I'm, uh, I'm choosing to use this nine ball as the K3 ball. And that, that nine ball gets me on the eight, which then gets me on the 12 in the side to get on the 15 ball break shot. So this is a little bit more adventurous. I'm, I'm choosing to go to the head rail off the one to get on the four. This needs a little bit of inside English. You don't want to do too much because if you end up straight on that four, then you have troubles. And this is kind of thin to hold the cue ball in the center of the table. Got to hit this real soft and make sure you cue it low, but uh, it comes out okay. It's almost impossible to hold the cue ball on this side of the shot line of this five from, from that shot, from that rail ball. And I... And I don't, but it's okay. Now I'll go take a look at the angle because you want to see if you have so much angle that you've got to go to the rail and back, or can you just pinch it and hold the cue ball here, and, and I can do the latter. So being a, uh, call, I'm calling this an old-school rack. I mean, that was not very difficult. I'm, I'm really uh, starting to experiment a lot more with uh, the type of break shot that Mike Siegel prefers and that he... He uh, ridicules modern players for smashing the rack so hard. You know, he's not wrong. There's something to it. And from here, you can go two ways, and I'm looking the shot line to the pocket, right? Because I can go two rails and try and get the cue ball right on that line. Or you can just go to the bottom rail and up. And that's what I choose to do. I love using the spot, the foot spot here as a target. And so I, I wanted to come past. You got the line to the foot spot. I wanted to come past that line. Then I'm almost straight. You can get any angle on this stripe and, and be good to get on the 15. This is the least desirable. I've got to tap it in, and you really don't want to be slow rolling balls into the side pocket. But uh, nitpicking there, it's still a great result. Let's go forward to the break shot. Oh, and there we go. So this one, again, old school. In, in uh, What I might have done, and if I had played this uh, six months ago, is really put a force follow stroke on that cue ball, expecting the cue ball to go to the side rail and down and just really mixing it up and trying to spread these balls wide. Instead, this was just a controlled break shot, um, medium soft, and you notice I had right English on the cue ball because then the cue ball goes to the side rail and just spins out to center table. That's old school. That's a controlled break shot. I don't have a cluster in the middle of the table, which is nice, and I've got... A bunch of open balls. Um, I'm really thinking twice and, and, and a third time as well about the kind of kind of rethinking how I hit a lot of the break shots as far as the speed. Maybe going going for more of an old school. This is a great result, and uh, this is what you want. Keep the cue ball alive, and you're in control, and and keep going. Tell me what you think. Are, is, are those were those two break shots what you would call old school? Is that the way? Uh, is that the right way to play? I'm thinking it is. Uh, leave a comment. Let me know. Hope you enjoyed that. See you next week on Rack of the Week.